Hi and welcome to Terry Talks Movies. 90% of movies are crap. Now if you think I said that for clickbait reasons, I didn't. The idea that 90% of movies are crap is based on Sturgeon's Law, a law of nature and of the universe first posited by Theodore Sturgeon in the 1950s, where he said that 90% of everything is crap, but it isn't quite that simple. I've done my research on Sturgeon's Law, and this video is going to be about how 90% of movies being crap is not a bad thing. Now, there were some progenitors before Sturgeon's Law, and I'm going to read these off Wikipedia, so bear with me. In 1890, Roger Kipling said, Four-fifths of everybody's work must be bad, but the remnant is worth the trouble for its own sake. And then in 1946, in an essay called Confessions of a Book Reviewer, George Orwell said, In much more than nine cases out of ten, the only objectively truthful criticism would be, this book is worthless. And then in 1957, Theodore Sturgeon came along, a really interesting guy, a very fine science fiction writer, very fine fantasy writer, and a nudist, who said in the September 1957 issue of Venture, so Sturgeon's revelation is this, it came to him that science fiction is indeed 90% crud, but also Eureka, 90% of everything is crud, all things cars, books, cheeses, hairstyles, people, and pins are to the expert and discerning eye crud, except for the acceptable tithe, which we each happen to like. Now, nobody talks about the last bit. I'll read that again. Except for the acceptable tithe, which is the 10%, which we each happen to like. This kind of got distilled down in 1958 to 90% of everything is crud. And there are two corollaries. First one is, the existence of immense quantities of trash in science fiction is admitted and it is regrettable, but it is no more unnatural than the existence of trash everywhere. And the second corollary is, the best science fiction is as good as the best fiction in any field, which I agree. So how does that relate to movies? Now, I'm surrounded on three sides by movies. There, 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 and a window there. And I kind of got thinking while I was sitting in here writing some notes. How does that inform and create my passion for movies and how do I accept that 90% of everything is crap now I've kind of got some ideas about this and I've got them down here and I'm going to use some movies to demonstrate them so get your pens and papers out there's going to be some movies you want to see and some movies you don't want to see in this video now crap is an incredibly subjective term I fully acknowledge that and the example of crap I've got here is one that I can say comfortably and with no shame and no hesitation and no qualification this is crap it was sent to me by umbrella entertainment who are doing a lot of things and th there is a market for this particular disc but for me it defines crap and again it is subjective they sent me retro sci-fi double feature volume 4 which has the movie versions of Battlestar Galactica the original one and of Buck Rogers in the 25th century I watched a bit of the Battlestar Galactica one, and then I stopped because I didn't like it. And I watched all of the Buck Rogers one. Now, you've got to remember, these came out in the late 1970s and in 1980 in the case of Buck Rogers. They were unashamedly designed as TV series, which they ultimately were, to ride on the coattails of the popularity of Star Wars, which is a bit like hitching a ride on the back of a garbage truck. I watched these and I thought, yeah, okay, well, the first one's a version of Exodus and the second one was an intellectual property that was done as a comic strip and as a movie serial in the 1930s. And they're not good. The acting is kind of okay. The scripts are atrocious. The production design is kind of rudimentary, but of course, special effects weren't in a very advanced stage at that time. And the stories are so incredibly cliched and ordinary and predictable that there's nothing to love for me in this particular disc both of them were made by glenn a larson the guy who eventually created knight rider which basically informed a lot of the future career of elon musk but these two movie versions of a tv series are deeply ordinary works they're not the kind of science fiction that inspired people to make movies later on they're both really cynical exercises. American television wanted something to combat the popularity of George Lucas's stuff, which of course was very derivative itself. So you've got a second generation photocopy here, 
copying a movie series which copied much better science fiction novels. So that fulfills my definition of crap. 100% of Battlestar Galactica and 100% of Buck Rogers in the 25th century was crap. That leaves me a bit of wriggle room. That brings me to what I call the drifting cringe, which are movies that we liked when we were younger, movies that we liked in past decades, movies that, movies that we even liked in just the last decade, which somehow have drifted into being cringy and cruddy. And there are a few different categories in this. First off, there are movies that age like a fine egg. I'll give you a couple of examples. They were popular at the time and they were from an actor who had won an Oscar as, as best leading actor in the 1950s, but who kind of cruised through his career in the 60s for the most part. These movies are misogynistic, they're sexist, they're pseudo 1960s hipster. And even though there's essentially a pretty good detective story in them, there are so many things that are repugnant about these movies. And the first one is, of course, Tony Rome with Frank Sinatra. And the second one starring the recently deceased Raquel Welsh, Lady in Cement. Now, that isn't to say there aren't parts of these movies that are good. Dan Blocker plays an interesting role in one of them. But watching these movies is an exercise in continuous cringing. The director was by Gordon Douglas, who was a kind of jobbing director in the 1960s and 1970s. And they've got those cliches of 1960s kind of male gaze. Crash zooms into the bums of women when they bend over, that kind of thing. And there are also some really homophobic bits about a lesbian couple in the movie, one of the movies. They're both cringy as hell and sexist as hell. And uh, the only reason I've got them still is they're in a four disc box set along with The Detective, which is a good 1960s Sinatra movie. And Von Ryan's Express, which is another good 1960s Sinatra movie. But Tony Rome and Lady in Cement are as cringy in their own way as Mickey Rooney in Breakfast at Tiffany's. For me, they're both crud. I may re-watch them just to kind of remind myself how cruddy they are at some stage in the future, if I'm in the mood for that kind of thing, but they're not movies I would recommend, whereas The Detective and Von Ryan's Express are movies that I would recommend. And they also come into the second category I've got, which is movies you grow out of. I watched these on TV when I was young. I watched them in the 1970s on TV and they were kind of cool. They had groovy Hugo Montenegro music in them. They had beautiful women. They had some interesting character actors and there are a lot of good character actors in those two movies. So I kind of grew out of them. My perceptions of how certain subjects should be handled changed over time as I grew up. So you get movies you grew out of. And that's kind of okay, because while you grow out of certain movies and they're pushed to the wayside, there are any number of other movies that you watch for the first time and, and instantly love, and they become part of your personal pantheon of movies you would recommend to friends. But to get back to Sturgeon's Law, the more movies you watch, the more movies that are in that 10% of movies that aren't crud. And so there are, as, as you can see behind me and around me, there are any number of movies I've got here that I consider not to be crud. There are probably one or two that are in there because they're part of a series and the series decreased in quality as time went on, which often happened, particularly in the 20th century. I've watched probably five or six times as many movies as are in this room over my many, many years of movie watching. But there are some I wouldn't want as part of my collection. And there are also a whole bunch of mainstream movies which are ubiquitous on streaming services and which I don't particularly want to re-watch, which don't go into the collection for the simple reason that I can get them in a thrift store if I want to. And there are any number of very popular movies from the early 21st century and the late 20th century, which are perpetually in thrift stores. They're kind of middle of the road, they're ordinary there not groundbreaking in any way they're not particularly interesting but they cater to an audience which has a kind of mainstream taste in cinema which i don't particularly have and also you've got the other aspect of things as well while i'm talking about 90 percent of movies being crap and while i'm talking about 90 percent of movies being crap there are crap movies i enjoy now back in the 1960s pauline Kael did a beautiful essay in defense of trash cinema and in defense of movies that are at times cringy but have enough interesting going on in them 
to be able to enjoy them and i've kind of dragged a few things out of the collection here now there's a four cult movie marathon volume two here angels on wheels chatterbox the naked cage and savage island now chatterbox is an american remake of a french adult film that alpha france put out in the 1970s about a young woman played by candace rialson whose nether regions take on a life of their own and have a voice of their own and basically it talks to her and it's a beautiful conceit in the way that it's a kind of titillating idea but it's also a feminist idea that women's genitalia can have a voice and can express how they feel about things and express opinions contrary to the woman so it's a different aspect of herself speaking and i love chatterbox for that reason the original is kind of fun too but it's um a next rated movie which might have a little trouble finding and also things like angels on wheels which is a bikey film and the naked cage which is women in prison film and savage island which is linda blair on an island and then you get other things too from later decades like shark to Boss, which is one of those kind of pseudo kaiju movies that came out around the turn of the century which uh, it's got eric roberts in it as well produced by roger and julie corman this is the kind of movie that we got when cg first became available and people could make ridiculous monsters and there are a whole bunch of these movies that came out there was two-headed shark attack then three-headed shark attack and five-headed shark attack all of those ones and they are unashamedly crap movies but they're entertaining crap movies and if you watch them with a certain aesthetic you can enjoy the hell out of them as well so while 90 percent of movies are crap sometimes crap is enjoyable and there are any numbers of others as well there are movies like homicidal and mr sardonicus from william castle which are great fun while not being great movies and movies like the brain that wouldn't die and reptilicus from this box set which also has the neanderthal man and the amazing transparent man these things are fun as well while being unashamedly and fully acknowledged crap and then you have like saucy 1970s movies like the sex thief which is an english movie starring david warbeck which is basically done as a titillation kind of film but in some ways it's, it's kind of fun to watch it was directed by the way by martin campbell who directed goldeneye in casino royale which makes it even more interesting so crap can be enjoyable and there are even things which um this one i like a lot i got it very very cheaply it's the very first mondo movie that i can find and it's a little thing which you may have trouble finding called european nights which is basically a tour through the nightclubs of europe in the late 1950s with an english language voiceover there are um other versions of it which don't have the english language voiceover but it's got a whole bunch of nightclub entertainers and nightclub acts from the 1950s yes you know, singers dancers magicians comedy acts ventriloquists all sorts of things like that and it is kind of crappy in a way it's not filmed particularly well but even though it is kind of crap it shows us what people were entertained by in the 1950s at the top end of town and for me i keep watching european nights every now and then because there's some really fun um, acts in here and it also shows the cities and how people dressed and things like that at that time of cinema and the last thing i will say about sturgeon's law and the fact that 90 percent of everything is crap sometimes 90 percent of a movie is crap but there are 10 percent of moments in that movie that we love and appreciate and enjoy and that level up the movie in our estimation and i like it when that happens when there's an ordinary movie and then a character actor comes in who steals the scene and does it brilliantly and the writer was suddenly touched by a muse and gives us crisp dialogue for that actor to say things like that or there are little bits of business to go on a little bits of hidden knowledge about safe cracking or, or something like that even in a bad heist film those little bits of business and things can make that 10 percent give us enough juice to enable us to watch the movie and enjoy it even though most of it may be crap so sturgeon's law and again sturgeon admitted right at the start 
that this is an incredibly subjective thing. When people say 90% of everything is crap, they mean I only like 10% of things in this particular realm. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. So you can safely and fully say 90% of movies are crap. And then you can whisper behind your hand, but the other 10% are marvellous. And I think that's what I want to do with the channel. I've been kind of thinking about the ph philosophy of the channel. And I'm going to try to focus on the 10% of movies, or even the 10% of a film, which is wonderful. And really express to you and to advise people to watch hidden gems that are part of that 10% but aren't necessarily getting much oxygen. And also larger films from other cultures that are interesting. And even science fiction films, which may be low budget, may be modern, may be old. But have something to say that resonates with modern audience and with our sensibilities. There are a lot of channels that are doing a lot more mainstream movies and getting the newest things out and getting something out about them and all strength of them. But for me, I want to concentrate on the 10%. Not necessarily highbrow films, but films that offer greater value than you expect from them. Those hidden gems, those surprise films, those movies that delight us and about which we speak to other people. So this is a bit of a different video. It isn't very specific. It's a very kind of shotgun approach to movies and movie reviewing. I just had to get it out. So on that note, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. You can also go to Kofi and buy me a coffee. You can also support the channel at patreon.com slash paleocinema. Got a few things coming up, and I've got some interesting things that are being delivered to me by various organizations. So in the meantime, watch some good movies, watch some bad movies. If you enjoyed 10% of a movie, you're way ahead of the game. I'll catch you next time. Thank you.